Hello, how are you? Lisa here with Lisa Fisher Styling. It is so good to be with you. Hey, today's subject is called Start Strong. Start Strong is a signature program. It's a step-by-step -step program that I walk my private clients through right from the beginning when we start to work together. The purpose of these signature steps within the Start Strong system, it's really designed to create ease and simplicity versus anxiety and overwhelm that oftentimes clients come into the program, you know, living or believing about their image, their wardrobe, their closet, and really just getting dressed every day. So that is why uh, the program was developed is to really step an a individual through some options, some ideas, some possibilities to create some peace and ease. So what we're going to enter into is talking about just a few tips. Uh, the first one starts out with what I call a styling strength assessment. The purpose of the styling strength assessment, which I'll show in just a moment, is really just to, to get a gauge on um, where are my strengths and where might be my weaknesses in the area of you know my confidence and so we'll go through a a series of different questions actually there's 11 and uh, the responses the potential answers range from you know no um, almost never to sometimes I, I I'm just really not sure um, to yes absolutely so if you will let's walk through together this uh, styling strength assessment. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to start out, out with three questions and then we'll go into more of this multiple choice um, where it's the no sometimes and then the yes absolutely. Okay so let's share the screen and we will begin. All right so the this is the styling strength assessment. So the first question is if you were you know, if you're watching this from your home or office and you're, you're sitting by yourself or maybe even with a team or with colleagues and we're asking ourselves this, what's important to you this year regarding your image or your appearance? You know, just uh, recently a, a new client said, wow, you know, I, this isn't something I normally think about in these terms. I just do my image and appearance. You know, I get my hair cut, I buy new makeup. Uh, that's really maybe as much as I think about it. So this might even be a new, um, a new question to you, a new way of thinking. But if you were to think, what is important to you regarding your image and appearance right now? What might be some of those top things that come to mind? So if you wanted to even pull out, you know, a blank piece of paper, uh, and, you know, or scratch pad and just to be able to answer these questions for yourself. The second one might be where are you in relationship to reaching your goals? So maybe you're saying what's important to me this year is creating a closet that serves me and I want easy grab and go outfits. I have, you know, three, four or five that I can simply pull together quickly and I feel confident every time I'm putting these pieces together. And I have the accessories that go with them. It's just a no brainer. It's ease and it's peaceful. So let's say that's your, your goal. And so the idea would be where are you in relationship to your goal? Is this new awareness <laughs> that this is, this, this is a, even a potential for this goal? Or are you in the midst of creating it for yourself? Or have you pretty much wrapped it up and you just have a few things to accomplish in order to really achieve that goal? Where are you at? Where are you at on the spectrum if it would be from new awareness to I'm, I'm mastering this particular goal? Where are you at in the spectrum? And three is what are some of your biggest challenges and perhaps in reaching your goal? Or if this again is new to you and you're thinking about your image, thinking about your appearance, right off the bat, do you happen to know for sure 
that there are some specific challenges you're facing? And if so, what might they be? Write them out, uh, talk about them if you're doing this in a group, but really, you know, identify what those might be. The fourth one, um, fourth and fifth are very similar, but they're going to differ in terms of either shopping or styling for these particular categories. So let's just read through it. Number four is circle the categories that are most difficult to shop for. And the categories are this, casual wear, lounge wear, active wear. And then I'm gonna go on to name a few more, but right there, you may be feeling, wait, 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 what's the difference? What's the difference between casual, lounge wear, and active wear? Hmm, maybe you're thinking, I actually wore the same thing for each of these pieces. Let's first of all pause and let's identify what casual wear might be for you. I'm just gonna give a generic possibility, maybe something that's more universal, but trust me, I'm, I'm definitely not here to say what your casual wear should be, but I'm just here to give some ideas and paint a picture. And if you like that, jump on board. If it's different for you, then awesome. Let's create it. But what this will do is bridge a gap for us to have some uh, language together in which we look at the different areas of our wardrobe needs. So casual wear, and the picture I'm going to paint is, let's say casual wear might be your weekend wear, what you're wearing on the weekends to uh, do your various activities. Maybe it's going to the grocery store or running some of those errands. And if you were in the grocery store, oftentimes I like to say this, if you ran into someone um, and you want to feel really your best, what might that outfit look like? So to me, that might be describing your casual wear. Something that is when you're doing your activities around town. Uh, lounge wear. So lounge wear really is something lounging when you're inside. So this might be something you might be wearing at night when you're maybe relaxing. You're watching a movie, listening to music, you're reading a book, and you're not really ready for pajamas or for bed or what whatever you might wear to bed, but you want like to lounge or um, imagine if you're going to a women's retreat and you're want, and there's a time where maybe you're gathering around the fireplace and you know um, having coffee something like that and maybe it's not totally pajamas but you're wanting to lounge and feel good and feel cute do you know what I'm saying so that sort of loungewear uh, just not what you're sleeping in let's say or if you want to and you want to say no loungewear is encompasses what I wear as well awesome go for it then that would identify as your loungewear I love this then the third active wear really uh, active wear would be whatever you're putting on to be uh, active from an exercise perspective whether that's walking jogging running going to the gym so that's a differentiator between active wear loungewear and active wear if that makes sense Okay, the next would be dressy casual. So dressy casual might be your casual wear, but when you're wanting to bump it up a level. I often will say like if you're meeting the girls for happy hour and you're wanting to feel cute and special or you're going on a date, um, you know, it's just you're wanting to feel a little up leveled. That would be perhaps your dressy casual or what could be dressy casual. It's elevated casual. Business casual or business dress might be whatever you um, are wearing while you're at work. So it could be elevated um, casual perhaps, um, but it might be even more conservative or um, it might be more mix and match based on your industry, where you're at, that sort of thing. Travel. Uh, that could definitely be a mix of some of all of the things that you have, or it could be this capsule that is, you know, full of different pieces that specifically do not wrinkle. Um, you love to, you love how they feel when you take them out of a suitcase, all the wrinkles fall out easily, and you like to reserve those pieces for travel, or you know the items to mix and match with a little bit of everything. Uh, so Cocktail or special occasion. Cocktail is usually something that you might wear to maybe a 
um, semi-formal wedding or some more formal, um, how should I say, a holiday event. And then special occasion can be all of the above, something where you might be wearing a gown or it could be elevated winter. So if you wanted a faux fur or something like that, or you know this beautiful leather piece because it's special occasion for whichever event. So that's the mind's eye in which I'm brush stroking and creating possibilities. And you may say three or four of these, I definitely identify and I don't need these others. Awesome. So the back to the question, it's circle the category that's most difficult for you to shop for. What would those be? And then number five is very similar to that, but it's saying, what are the categories that are most difficult to style? So when I say style, it's put outfits together that you feel really awesome in and pulled together once you have the whole outfit on. You know that time where you're looking in the mirror? That's what I mean. All right, so you're doing so well. Let's go down to the rest of the style strength assessment. So there's 11 questions and the idea is um, if you're writing this on a piece of paper, maybe you have three sections. It's no, sometimes, and yes. And just identify what your answers are to these specific questions. So number one is, you know what to wear for your shape, your silhouette, and your body proportion. How would you answer that? No, sometimes, or yes, always. Number two, you're able to select colors that complement your skin, your hair, your skin, excuse me, your hair, skin, and eyes. How would you answer that? Three, choosing styles that reflect your personality is easy for you. Is that no, sometimes, or yes? Four, you project a confident first and lasting impression by the way you dress. What do you think? You might say, well, I don't know how my first impression comes across. Well, maybe, how about instead of how it comes across to others, how do you feel when you go somewhere for the very first time? How do you feel when you walk into the room? Do you feel confident in that you're projecting your authentic self. So how would you answer that? No, sometimes, or yes. Five is selecting what to wear for the day, including accessories, takes less than 10 minutes in the morning, or 10 minutes or less. Six, your closet has clear visibility and easy accessibility to all of your wardrobe. So you open up the door of your closet, you can see it all, you can reach it, touch it, feel it, grab it, easy accessibility and visibility. No, sometimes, or yes, always. Seven, you know how to achieve a good fit and expert professional alterations for your clothing if needed. Eight, proper garment care comes easy to you. So that could be uh, if there's stains, you know how to care for it. If you're washing it, if you're hanging it or folding it, you, you know this information. Nine, you are confident mixing and matching basics in your wardrobe to create multiple outfits for any given season. How do you feel about that? Are you confident? No, sometimes, yes, always. Two more to go. You prepare wardrobe and accessories for travel with ease. And the last one is shopping. It's fun. <laughs> How would you answer that? How do you answer that? No, sometimes, yes, absolutely. All right, so what, um, what you can do now is just add up your areas. How many no's, how many sometimes, and how many yeses? All right, and then see which category possesses the, mo the highest number. If you're highest in the no category, that may mean, and some, I, some feedback to share with you, is that may mean that you uh, would really benefit from some support uh, and some encouragement and perhaps you know, some sharing of some skill sets to launch you and to provide you with some additional support to help you in this journey. Sometimes 
might mean that you just need maybe a few tips and maybe like this workshop, this, this information will be perfect to help launch you. And if you have, you know, nine out of 11 are in the always yes category, you are on your way to mastery. Congratulations. And you might just need like maybe one or two tips to be like, I got this. So where are you at? And this is really awesome information and feedback to, to really, um, you know, it's to look at it objectively versus emotionally and see like how you're feeling on this anxious scale. Feeling stressed about it or are you over here like, I'm feeling really confident. If you're over here in that anxiety stress level, mm, I want to just offer you that there is support, offer you the idea. And I offer a complimentary, if this could be of service to you, a complimentary 30-minute uh, interaction on Zoom or phone call to be able to listen to those areas where you may be feeling stuck or reviewing some of these no sections and seeing how I could come alongside of you to support you in your image strong journey. All right. How can you register with that is if you head to lisafisherstyling.com and Fisher is F-I-S-C-H-E-R lisafisherstyling.com on the home page at the bottom uh, you'll see there where we can connect um, or on the about page and just reach out and let's schedule a 30-minute consult or on the schedule page you can book it right there with your time slot that you're interested that works for you or simply send me an email uh, if you're looking for alternative times outside the ones that are posted awesome how was this for you if you're ready, let's do it. Let's jump to the second category. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing the screen here. Okay, perfect. Let's stop sharing the screen and um, just really pause and say, I'm super proud of you. I'm super proud of you for even watching this information. In the 20 years of being in the image industry, and the six plus years of having Lisa Fisher styling, I will say that talking about our image or discussing the getting dressed process based on you know, our family of origin, how we were raised, our experiences as we were raised and the words spoken over us, how we navigated through school, into our job, in our relationships, and the words that were said, the experiences we had, this subject of image and appearance can oftentimes bring up a lot of emotions. And I get it. And I too went through that as well. And that's why Lisa Fisher Styling is a safe place for women to come to to navigate the subject of style, appearance, and image confidence. Can you hear those sirens in the back? I apologize. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch gears and we're going to go into what I call image, the image wheel. And let's see if we can do this. So, share screen. All right. So this is the image strong wheel and what this category is, is it's eight sections of a pie, if you will, that uh, I love this analogy that we, we can look at it as a pie, as a circle. What I like to do is visualize uh, this as a wheel. And I call it the image strong wheel. And I put the various components that make up our image in this wheel. So we have at the top left, we have wardrobe and accessories, to grooming, to outfit styling, to management and resources. So this might be, you know, managing our process of when we buy um, clothing, when we edit clothing, where do we take clothing? all uh, you know when do we when do we go through our wardrobe and decide you know um, this no longer fits or it's ruined or it's dirty or 
do you know what I'm saying? The management of ourself. Um, the other is um, dressing for our shape, dressing for our best colors that are most attractive on us and understanding our style. This section here is um, closet. So like, how do we feel about our actual closet, everything that's hanging there, how it's organized, what's in there, the whole thing. Um, this section represents shopping. So this would be uh, knowing where to shop, when to shop, shopping online, and our confidence in that area. Over here, this section is personal development. So that could be um, those resources that attribute to our mindset about our image. So what are the words we're saying? What are we thinking? If we're wanting to make a change in an area, do we have the resources to help us to develop that area where we might want to be um, strengthening um, that we found that we've been weakened, but we have a goal and a trajectory in mind. So the idea with this wheel, if you were just to, to look at it uh, right now and gauge, let's say like the middle is a level zero. Um, and then as you work out towards the end of the wheel, that's a level 10. So it's zero is the weakest, if you will, 10 is the strongest. And then looking as you go around the categories, what kind of a score would you give yourself and how confident you feel in each of these areas? Another way to look at this wheel is like if we were to take a crayon or a marker and we were to start to shadow or to color, like, okay, if we're looking at wardrobe and accessories and we're saying, you know what, I feel really confident about how to select my wardrobe, how to select my categories, how to put them together. I'm gonna color this in. I'm gonna say I feel like a nine, then it's gonna look all colored in till about like right here. So that, but then when we go to grooming, we're like, oh, I just, I feel like I don't even know what to do with my hair. I'm unsure how to do my makeup. Um, I feel like I need to do some anti-aging work, but I don't know where to start. So I feel like a three. So over here, it's gonna be shadowed in till like a three, okay? So that's how to look at the wheel. Then when you go through and shadow or give a number to each of those sections, then the idea is to step back from the wheel and say, like if this is the image wheel rolling down the road of life, my path of life, how balanced is it? Or is it ill balanced, meaning my wheel kind of goes, you know, kaplunk, kaplunk kaplunk down the road. So meaning it's full on one side, but it has like a divot. And so it kind of goes kaplunk. If you've ever been in a car and you have a flat tire, you know what that might feel like or sound like. So that's the visual I'd like to offer you here. The next uh, slide that I'll bring up is actually uh, has these different blocks of the wheel. Um, there's eight of them on an outline, so this might give you a different way to look at it. So let's bring that up. Okay, so these are the same things. It's it's the same eight things, but it's just laid out a little differently. So it's personal development, grooming, shopping, shape, wardrobe accessories, outfit styling, the closet, and management. So this is, okay, what is it in those specific areas that I'm feeling ill-equipped with? Where are the areas that I need to, or I desire to build my strength in? So maybe consider writing these down. So for example, maybe in personal development, um, maybe, let's say for example, I have a client right now who is working on losing uh, 50 pounds and she, is working on changing what she says because when she looks in her closet she goes i have nothing to wear i'm fat so we've been talking about um taking out those pieces that no that currently don't fit her and finding the pieces that do right now and putting the ones that don't in a different closet but then what she's saying when she's getting dressed is every day i'm getting closer to my new size and i feel great about the woman I am today. She literally has trained herself to say that 
because she's on a trajectory. She's on a journey, right? She's on a journey. You're on a journey. I'm on a journey. It's just like, what are those areas that we're working on? So in personal development, it might, if, if you're relating with that story, just like she was, she needed to get some personal development on controlling her words, understanding that the mind follows what the, what the voice, you know, what, what we speak, the words we say. And uh, so that's just an example, maybe under grooming. So something that came up for me was, uh, wow. So I don't know, those of you, depending on how well you know me or not, you may know that um, I wear hair. <laughs> what that means is I started losing hair in my twenties. And so I actually supplement in on my head, I supplement with hair, uh, and it's something I have to get once a year. So for me, I'm not feeling confident. Let's say right now in the area of my grooming because my 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 extensions and things are getting old. So if I were filling out this, I would say um, buy new hair, right? Um, so that's an example. How about you? So here's the eight areas of the wheel personal development, grooming, shopping, shape, color, and style, wardrobe and accessories, outfit styling, the closet, and management and resources. An example from management resources, for example, I was just um, talking with a gal this last week, and she said, gosh, I'm about ready to have you over, and we're going to edit out my closet, and we were talking about this might be a great time to get some new hangers, and she's like, oh my God. Do you have any ideas? I'm like, I do. And so I sent her some resources for my favorite huggable hangers where, you know, you put a cami on a hanger and everything stays exactly instead of the cami falling off and falling on the floor, which drives me, drives me into um, anxiousness instead of peace. <laughs> so that's what this form is. All right. So once you have these, you know, some, some ideas marked out in some of these various areas, then the next step is a 90 day goal in which you're going to accomplish your top priorities. So uh, this would be, let's say, take the first one. Um, if just to give an example for me and I wrote down under grooming, get new hair. <laughs> it's funny as this sound, I mean, we're just being real, right? In, in my uh, first part here, it would be, okay, get new hair. The most ideal outcome is I would have um, purchased the new hair um, by, gosh, by, I would say, my birthday, which is in two weeks. The, the key questions or the obstacles is, um, is researching some hair colors that I want to experiment with. And also, uh, I'm wanting to uh, do some research on some different resources of where I could buy hair. So strategies to overcome the obstacles might be uh, making a few phone calls to other uh, places that I know uh, sell hair, talking to my hairstylist, talking to a few other uh, clients who I know also wear extensions, that sort of thing. Do you see what? And then the first step. So then the first step is once I identify it, then I put it, the next is I put it in my calendar, okay? So 90 days, and it's picking your top three things and accomplishing it in 90 days. A client this last week, she's getting ready to go on a trip, and it's a couple months away, so she's planning today for her trip that's in a couple of months, and she wants to create a mix and match, you know, suitcase of clothing that intermix together so she can just bring a carry-on. All right, we got some work to do. So do you see how this, um, this sheet is super, 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 super helpful? All right. So can you see how um, these are those steps that are so helpful in building our confidence where most people think, if I have an outfit, you know, if I have a bunch of clothes in my closet, now I'm happy. And oh, by the way, everything needs to be brand new and everything trending 
and X, Y, Z, whatever that is. When in actuality, confidence in the closet starts way before that. And these are just a few of many building blocks to assist in, in being, you know, in planning and preparing on purpose in feeling image strong versus image, you know, weak. <laughs> and I hope that th this has been helpful. This has stirred some ideas for you. And then the fifth and final uh, tip is to create some affirmation cards. Uh, you know, that can be as simple as, you know, taking a magic marker and writing on your mirror in your bathroom or literally taking three by five cards and, you know, writing some affirmations and looking at them and reading them every day in terms of the woman that you are and how you're wanting to show up. One example, uh, back to that client who is traveling in a couple of months, she blessed me so big the other day. She, she was sharing with me uh, her affirmation statement. Don't know if I'm going to share it verbatim, but it was something like this. Um, I am confident. I am a confident traveler and I have mix and match basics that make me feel amazing and bring me peace and ease as I travel to Paris. I mean, isn't that amazing? And she looks at that every day. And so what about you? What are those areas that you're wanting to build your confidence in? It could be on any of those eight subjects in the wheel. It could just be something simple about how you're showing up authentic to who you are on a daily basis. Or it could be maybe there's um, something like on the personal development side, maybe you have a particular fitness goal and you're affirming that you are a certain, um, you know, maybe size and, a, and, or you're lifting a certain amount of weight or you can walk a certain amount of miles. Do you see what I'm saying? It's those things to assist you in feeling image strong. It's not about having it all perfect. Like if you were to say your three by five card says, I'm the most perfect, you know, 10 or whatever. I like this for her heel. But if, if you, do you know, I believe you know what I mean. I am trusting that you do. So how can I be of support to you? What questions might you have? Uh, if you like to continue this conversation and or uh, let's meet for a consultation call to review your style strength assessment, please schedule your uh, complimentary consultation today over at lisafisherstyling.com forward slash schedule. And you'll see right there where you can pick your time, schedule your time, you'll get a confirmation and then we will book it. I'm so excited to see you and I am cheering you on. I'm encouraging you to live life image strong. All right, we'll talk to you again. Take good care.